Hi there, Charger family. This is Mrs. Boyd at Mrs. Boyd's Math Room. Thanks for joining me today for a lively discussion about multi-step equations. This is the middle section on how to solve an equation where we have multiple steps, but all our variables are on the same side. So let's read what this says. Check the number of constants and variables on each side of the equation. Determine which value should be removed on both sides of the equation so that you can isolate the variable. So what that's saying, let's look at number one. We've got um, on the right, one constant. On the left, a variable and a constant. So our best bet, the, the shortest path to get this equation solved is gonna be to leave the variable exactly where it is and move all the constants to the other side of the equation. Okay, so let's do just that. We wanna move positive 10 to the other side to get negative two in alone. So the opposite of plus 10 is gonna be minus 10. So we subtract 10 from each side. That gives us negative two n equals 20. Now, we wanna work on getting n alone the only thing keeping n from being alone is this negative two. What is negative two doing to n? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? You're right, it's multiplying. So instead of multiply, we're going to do the opposite, which is divide. So we're gonna divide both sides by negative two. Remember, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side. Get rid of those negative twos, we're left with n equals 20 divided by negative two is negative 10. And that's our answer. Let's double check our work by plugging in negative 10 to our original equation. So we've got negative two times negative 10 plus 10. Well, negative two times negative 10 is 20 plus 10 is 30, which is exactly what we've got that we're supposed to have. We've done a great job. Excellent. All right, moving on. Number two is really similar. Please pause it here and try this one on your own. Please pay attention before you pause to where the constants are and where the variable is in relationship. It's not quite the same as number one. Okay, we wanna get three A all alone. So I'm going to get rid of negative 14. I've got four on the left alone already. I want to move all the constants over there. So the opposite of minus 14 is plus 14. So I'm going to do that exact same thing to each side. We're left with 18 equals 3a comes down. Negative 14 plus 14 cancels. We want to get a alone. So we have to get rid of 3. 3 is multiplying by a. Multiplying with a, I guess. The opposite of multiply is divide. So we divide both sides by three. 18 divided by three is six, and that equals the threes cancel, and we're left with a. So we have a equals six. Let's plug that into our equation and see if it checks out. Four equals three times six minus 14. That's four is 18 minus 14. And four is, four is true. We did it. All right, let's move on to another type of equation. We've got neg n divided by three minus eight equals negative two. Well, the same idea. I've got a constant here, negative eight, and a constant here, negative two. The first step to simplifying this is to get the constants together. Well, we also have n divided by three on the left. Well, eventually we're gonna need n to be alone. So I'm gonna take negative eight and scoot it over here. The opposite of negative eight, positive eight. So we add eight to each side. n over three stays exactly how it is. Negative eight plus eight cancels out. Equals stays, negative two plus eight is six. Well, now we wanna get n alone. So to do that, we have to get rid of this divided by three. 
What's the opposite of divided by a three? You're right, multiply by, not by n, holy moly. Lost it. Multiply by three. So three divided by three cancels and we're left with n and that equals 18. Let's plug it in and make sure it works. 18 divided by three minus eight, that's six minus eight, that's negative two. And that's the same as right there. Super duper. Next one, I want you to please pause and try it on your own. It's real, real similar to the one we've got going now. All right, so we've got x plus x divided by four plus five on the left and a one on the right. To get to the x term, we need to get rid of this five. So the opposite of positive five, negative five. Do that on Excuse me. Uh, five minus five cancels. I'm left with, left with x over four and that equals negative four. Now, we wanna get x alone, so the opposite of dividing by four is multiplying by four. Four divided by four cancels out, and I'm left with x. Negative four times four is negative 16. Let's plug this back in and check our work. Five plus negative 16 over four is one maybe. So that's five, negative 16 divided by four is negative four. And that's one is one. That is the truth. All right, next. Um, it's a lot the same, five and six are. So let's try, pause here and try those on your own and we'll walk through them together. All right, um, we wanna get the X term alone. So we'll subtract 12 from each side starting off. We've got negative x over 6. The 12s cancel, and that equals negative 19. Remember, if the um, terms, the constants have the same sign, you add them together and then uh, put the same sign in front. Oh, my gosh. All right. Um, now, here, it looks like we have negative x over 6, but that's not, that's not really what we want. We want this negative to only hang on to the number, not the variable. So the opposite of divide by negative six is multiply by negative six. So negative six over negative six cancels and we're left with x. 19, negative 19 times negative six is 114. Let's plug it in and check. Negative 114 over six, plus 12, that is negative 19 plus 12, or negative seven, which is what we have. Uh, try the next one on your own again, if you haven't already. All right, um, so we wanna get the M term alone, so we're gonna need to move that six to the other side. That's two thirds M, Sixes cancel, that equals negative 18. So this particular problem we can do in one step or two. I'm gonna show you both ways. You pick which one you like the most. Um, so I can see that, I can, I'm gonna rewrite this term with M on it, or in it. And I'm gonna rewrite it as two M over three. Yes, that's a two, don't judge me. Uh, so I know I need to multiply by three on each side to get rid of the three in the denominator. So threes cancel. I've got two M equals negative 54. And now to get rid of the two, I can divide both sides by two and get M equals negative 27. Or let me go back to that step. But this time I'm gonna leave it two thirds M equals negative 18. So instead of breaking it up into two steps, I'm gonna make it one. I'm gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal. 
because m is being multiplied by this fraction. The opposite of multiplying by the fraction is dividing, right? But we don't divide fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. We need to flip it over and multiply on both sides. So threes cancel, twos cancel, and I'm left with m. And that equals, if I can imagine that negative 18 is over 1, I've got negative 18 divided by 2. Well, that's the same as 1 and negative 9, if I go ahead and simplify before I multiply. And then negative 9 times 3 is negative 27. So it's the same path to the same answer. Not the same path, different paths to the same answer. Both of these solutions are acceptable, okay? If multiplying by the reciprocal makes your brain hurt, please make it two steps. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. A lot of times, if if it's me doing it and I'm doing it in my head, I do it in two parts. If I'm doing it on paper, I do it on one. So either one of these is completely perfect. Last kind of problem we're going to look at today. Um, well, not last one, but last one on the front here. Uh, we've got C minus 5 on top. And that's all divided by 4. Well, I cannot get to the C or the minus 5 without getting rid of four first. So we have to do that first. The opposite of dividing by four is multiplying by four. So I'm gonna do that on each side. Those fours cancel. I'm left with C minus five with no denominator, and that equals 12. Now to get rid of the negative five and get C alone, I'm gonna add five to each side and get C, that's a plus. Those cancel equals 17. Let's plug that back in and see that we've got the right answer. 17 minus 5 is 12 over 4, and 12 divided by 4 is 3, which is what we have. Number 8 is the same idea. Please try it on your own. All right, we want to get rid of this times the divided by 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Those cancel. Got b plus 1 equals 6. Subtract 1 on each side, and b is 5. Let's check our work. You get 5 plus 1 over 3. That is 6 over 3, which is 2, which is the truth. All right, flip it over. Let's do a few more. Um, now, we have a denominator over an expression on the top with including our r and another number out, another constant in front. This one's just gonna take a couple more steps and it's no big deal, we've totally got it. Well, before we can multiply by 12, we can multiply by 12, but it ha this whole term has to be alone before we can do that. So we've gotta get rid of the, the plus two first. So we're gonna minus two on each side. We're left with r plus 13 over 12. The plus 2 minus 2 cancels, and that equals 1. Now I can say, well, I got to get the r out from the numerator. So I'm going to divide and multiply both sides by 12. That's r plus 13 equals 12. Now to get r all the way alone, I'm going to subtract 13 on each side. I've got r, those 13s cancel, equals negative 1. Let's plug that in and see what we get. Uh, negative 1 plus 13 over 12 plus 2. That's 12 over 12 plus 2. That's 1 plus 2 is 3, which is what we have. The next one's a lot, a lot the same. Please try it and come back. All right, we got to get rid of this extra constant first, so we're going to subtract 7. Our fraction stays the same, 15 minus a divided by 3. 7s cancel, and that equals negative 9. Now I can multiply both sides by 3. 3s cancel. I'm left with 15 minus a equals negative 27. 
So this um, is another place where you can take two paths. and I'm going to show you each one. Um, we want to get A. We don't care about negative A. Right now we have negative A, which is not my favorite. So you can do one of two things. First, I'm going to add A to both sides. That's 15 equals A minus 27. Now I can add 27 to each side. Those cancel and I'm left with 42 is A. Other way to think about it. I'm going to write the same equation here. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 15 from each side to get A alone. 15 cancel. I've got negative A equals negative 42. Well, we can imagine there's a negative 1 in front of A. So I can divide by negative 1. The negatives cancel. I'm left with A equals positive 42. Those are the exact same answer, obviously. 42 and 42 are the same. Whichever one of these makes sense to you is what I want you to do. Um, these are the, these, I don't care. Whichever one makes the most sense is what I want you to pick. All right, a few word problems and we're all done. Now we're gonna write an equation and solve. Twice a number, so we're gonna make our number equal x. So 2x plus four equals six. Well, that's easy enough. Well, now we want to get our x term alone, so we'll subtract four. We've got two x, fours cancel, equals two. We wanna get x alone, so we divide by two. We've got x is one. Let's plug it in and test it out. Two times one plus four. That's two plus four or six, which is what we've got. Try the number 12 on your own. All right, seven less than four. Remember, that means we're going to flip it around and have four times a number minus seven, and that is 13. Uh, so to get the x term alone, we're gonna add seven to each side. Four x, sevens cancel, and that equals 20. Divide both sides by four to get x alone, and x is five. Let's plug it in and try it out. 4x, whoop, not 4x, 4 times 5, minus 7 is 13. That's 20 minus 7, or 13. And 13, indeed, equals 13. Um, and we're talking about three consecutive integers. I'm not sure if we've talked about this yet or not, but, it, but I think it's on another set of notes. Anyways. Um, three consecutive integers, if we want to find, you know, we're just going to skip this one for now. We'll do it again another time. I hope this all makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any trouble. Uh, I'd be happy to help. I look forward to seeing you soon.